Come close, I have something to tell you. Do not, under any circumstance, go and watch the new Joker movie. It is not good. The new Joker movie, Joker and whatever those French words say, is possibly the worst sequel I have ever watched. And as you can see, I'm standing for this video because we're getting serious, boys. I need room for activities here. I'm going to be getting animated. Now, if you do not want spoilers, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tidbit here. But for those of you who don't care about spoilers, uh, you're not going to get much from this video. Nothing happens in this movie. But before we begin, I'm dying sick. I'm actually smothering, so I'm sorry about my voice. And you might hear a few sniffles here and there because to the gods, my nostrils don't exist right now. But anywho, Joker 2. Should you go see it? Absolutely not. No doubt in my mind. Do not waste your money. I don't want this video to be entirely negative because the only good thing out of this movie is the performances. Joaquin Phoenix once again puts on an amazing performance, just like the first one, just not as good. There was just not good writing around them this time. Brendan Gleeson, a fellow Irishman, is in this movie. He is in so many random movies, man. He always plays small roles and he just pops up everywhere. He is very good in this movie. Lady Gaga does a very good job with Harley Quinn, I have to say. The writing around there, little bit funky at times, much like the rest of the movie, but all things considered, she does a great job in this movie and that is just about the length of the good things i have to say about this movie which is really fucking unfortunate i loved the first joker movie i thought it was fucking great i watched it like five or six times i showed like three or four people the movie for the first time i was loving this movie i thought it was so good and joaquin phoenix fucking got an oscar for it and it was the only oscars that i actually ever followed i actually wanted to know who won the oscar this time so don't think that i take any pride sitting here talking shit about this movie because i was excited for this movie i gave this movie every fucking benefit of the doubt that i had in my body right up until the last five minutes of the movie. That's when I lost all hope. The only other good thing that is in this movie is the musical sequences. And it, again, if you don't want to spoil it, I'm not going to mention what the musical sequences entail. But all I will say is all the musical sequences aren't happening in reality. They're not real. And the only time anything happens in this movie is during the musical sequences. So keep that in mind. The only time anything interesting or even somewhat enjoyable happens on screen, it's not even real. It's not happening. I don't know how, in God's green earth, they fucked up this movie as much as they did. This is, without a doubt, the worst sequel I have ever seen. And that's saying a lot. I'm very, very easy to please in movies. Even if the story is not, like, top tier. Even if there is a lot of plot holes. If I somewhat enjoy my experience watching the movie, I'm not going to really say much bad about it. There were multiple instances in this movie that I wanted to go home. That has never happened to me before. I seen The Green Lantern in cinemas and I had an enjoyable time. That just puts it into perspective for you right there. Now, I will say this. Before I went to see the movie, a lot of people that like their movie interests kind of align with mine, like the movie reviewer YouTubers and stuff that I watch that like usually have similar interests to me, they all put up videos saying that this movie is bad. I didn't want to be a sheep. I wanted to form my own opinion. Don't be like me. So if you are even somewhat on the fence or even thinking about getting on the fence of going to see this movie or watching people talk about it with spoilers, watch the people talk about it. Preferably myself, please. Thank you. It will save you two and a half hours of agony and depression and a lot of sadness. A lot of genocidal thoughts, if you will. You know, like it is that bad. <laughs> like It's so fucking bad. Okay, boys, spoiler time. Where the fuck do I begin? Okay, I'll start with the general story. What the fuck was that? Nothing happens. How is that possible? We start in the same place and end in the same place. The only time we are out of the prison or anything associated with the prison, like say, like the musical group that fucking Joker goes to, is when we are in the courtroom. If you haven't seen the movie yourself, I'll explain it really quickly. Basically, what happens is he has to go to court over his crimes in the first movie, and the state is seeking the death penalty for young Joaquin here. And basically, he is going to this courtroom to plead insanity, because word on the street is he actually has a split personality. So they are trying to say that Joker is a completely different personality than Arthur Fleck. That's the whole movie. You, you think I'm joking. No, it's it, it's the whole movie, which is fucking mind blowing to say the least. That is the only intrigue about this movie. That is it. So the entire movie, we are either seeing Joker in jail doing very not Jokery things, and then the rest of the movie is him in this courtroom doing nothing, and all we're doing is hearing the same stuff that we seen in the first movie being talked about on trial. 
and people from the first movie coming in to testify either against or for Arthur. They keep going on about like the subway guys that were literally kicking the shit out of them, which it's America, bro. Do you who really think? People would give that much of a shit about these three little fuckers who were literally about to kill Arthur at that point. Just because they were drunk. That's like a big thing that I was like, why are they drawn on about these three guys so much on the subway? Because that was the only moment where he killed somebody in that movie that it was actually justified. They were dicks. They were kicking the shit out of my man. He defended himself and they keep harping on them as if that is like the big one that he done, you know? But like throughout the entire movie, I was giving it the benefit of the doubt because I was like, oh, if they actually end up getting like halfway through the movie per se, and him and Harley end up getting out of prison somehow, maybe escaping like, you know, jokery thing would do. Throughout the entire movie, it was painted in this way that Harley Quinn was trying to manipulate Arthur into bringing out his Joker side more, which she was doing that. And then those two will meet up and cause some mayhem together because she is purposely poking this fire for Joker to come out and like a bad influence on Arthur basically to make him be more like the Joker. So if it did go that way and they, he ended up escaping and they met up, she would have been able to manipulate him and make him do some very, very, very bad things. But that assumption is very, very far from what we actually got. If you thought Harley Quinn was going to have any sort of like role at all in this movie you are sorely fucking mistaken because about halfway through this movie when we got to the court scenes and Arthur was asking uh, his lawyer to make sure that Harley gets a better seat next time I went to the toilet couldn't hold it needed to go and while on my journey to the toilet I was thinking to myself I was like has this movie been going on as long as I feel like it has or am I just feeling like that because I'm bored and then I checked the time and realized that we only had 35 minutes left of the fucking movie. So on my journey back, I thought, of course it's going to go somewhere, right? <laughs> Why would you think that? Why would you ever think that? You think you're gonna get like an exciting plot line in a Joker movie? Are you serious, you fucking silly goober? What I returned to was Joker in full makeup, which, you know, is a very Joker thing to do, but if you were trying to defend yourself, maybe dressing up the exact same way you were when you shot the guy you're being incriminated for uh, isn't a good call. Like, Joker's just an idiot in this movie. Like, he's supposed to be, like, smart, like, diabolically smart. And then he goes on to, like, put on, like, a southern accent while talking to Mr. Puddles, and he was just like, oh, Puddles? Your real name's Puddles? Seriously? Like, it's really like some fucking primary elementary school type shit, man, honestly. But in all fairness, that is the only good moment in the movie I feel like because this character is genuinely traumatized after what Arthur done from the first movie. So he is telling him this. He's like, you were the only one that was ever nice to me. You never made fun of me. Talking about how he hasn't been able to sleep. He's scared all the time. And like the acting from this fucking guy is crazy. And it was a really good scene, honestly, because as he's saying this to the Joker, you can kind of see him like kind of have a reaction to it in some way being like, oh, I didn't think that I hurt you that much. He's like, I didn't hurt you. I told you I would never hurt you. You are my friend. You were my friend. And then you just see the Joker get more and more exaggerated and angry because this guy is saying stuff to him that he isn't getting very nice emotions from. That was a good scene. But too bad it was 20 minutes towards the end of the movie. <laughs> but like other than that, nothing really happens in this portion, especially when the Joker is on display. It's the first time in the movie we see the actual Joker on display. But there was a part that I thought they could have done in a very cool way, and I wish they'd done it this way. It would have been real interesting. As I said at the start of the video, all of the actual like uh, musical sequences are all in his head. It's trying to show what like Arthur's fantasies are like. And we see a lot of them throughout the movie, but it is always shown to us and made obvious that these aren't real these aren't actually happening but at one point in the courtroom he has a really cool moment where he just walks up to the defenders or the uh whatever the fuck he called them harvey dent who was trying to fight against the joker he walks up to him and just beats him with a stool while in full makeup and everything having a full dance number harley quinn uses harvey dent's blood to like put a smile on her face like that was a really cool fucking scene it goes on for a little bit and he beats the judge with the gavel but i thought it would have been really kill if it like cut back to reality and that actually happened because we were shown it so much and it was driven home so much that these are his fantasies they're not real the audience would have been expecting that one to be fake also 
But like if it just cut back and then you just see Arthur Fleck there with the gavel in his hand and everyone around screaming and fearing for themselves, that would have been a really cool jumping off point because then the line would have been getting blurred between the fantasy and reality. And that would have been a good like jumping off point for the Joker taking over. You know what I mean? That would have been so fucking cool. I honestly would have loved this movie if they just had done that. But where I'm going with this is, the thing about Harley Quinn that really fucking annoyed me, man, is that they're in the court. It's the last, like, uh, he is supposed to give his last message to the jury. And he has a real vulnerable moment. He starts talking about how there is no Joker. Uh, everything, everyone that he killed was him. And then it's kind of confirmed that there isn't a split personality thing going on here. And Harley Quinn just gets up and walks out. She looks very annoyed. And then, out of a fucking nowhere, a bomb blows up. The entire courtroom. Harvey Dent becomes Two-Face in that moment because his whole fucking side of his body is burnt. Like, it was an exciting scene. The Joker goes out, there was this cool moment when, like, you see a, a Joker cosplayer, like, walking up to him and he kind of had to, like, do a double take. And I feel like they purposely, like, casted a actor who looks similar to him in Joker form because it was kind of like a mirrored looking situation where, like, he was walking up and seeing his Joker persona in front of him and you even see him, like, staring at him, like, is this actually happening? Happening. But no, it's just a fan of the Joker who like kidnaps the Joker basically, puts him in the car, starts like asking if he's okay, and then nothing comes from that either. Another fucking plot thread out the window. He just runs away from the guys. One of them gets hit by a car, and that's it. We don't see from them ever again. But then we get to the infamous staircase. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. The Joker is free. He's going to meet Harley Quinn. Whatever could happen, like the, the possibilities are endless. He goes up to Harley Quinn, who's at the top of the stairs. They, he starts saying like, look, I'm free, we can m go away together. And what does Harley Quinn say? No. And do you know what Harley Quinn does when the Joker is begging her to run away with him? She starts singing. There's five fucking minutes left of the movie and she starts singing. That was the exact moment I lost hope. The exact moment. All of my friends that I was with collectively saw me slump over and headbutt the chair in front of me in despair. As soon as she started singing, I lost it. I just didn't want to be there anymore. And then Harley Quinn walks away and the Joker gets incarcerated again. Who made this movie, man? Nothing at all happens. This is like going to the red light district in Amsterdam and they just do the foreplay and then tell you to leave. After you paying for the full experience by the way, like there are so many things in this movie that just go nowhere. Fucking baffling, the entire court scene was useless and on top of that, I haven't even spoke about the worst part by the way. If you haven't seen the movie or haven't seen anything anyone talk about the movie, I am just gonna tell you to prepare yourself right now because after all of this, Two hours and 20 minutes of fucking nothing. I would have had more fun watching Paint Drive, I'm being honest with you. They give us the biggest middle finger I have ever seen in cinema. The Joker's back in prison, starts following this guy down a hallway. Don't know exactly where he's being led, but then another inmate that we've seen a little bit of uh, calls him over and says if he can tell him a joke. He says that he will make it quick. Now, I don't remember the joke word for word because I was already tuned out at this point, but it's something along the lines of meeting your idol, basically. And after he tells this stellar joke, he ends it with you get what you fucking deserve. And my man proceeds to shank the Joker over and over and over again, ending in the Joker dying. Yep, the Joker, the leading man, the man, the myth, the legend. Mister, do you know where I got these scars? They kill the main fucking character, the Joker. We didn't get to see the Joker at all in this movie and they kill him. And to add fuel to the fire, the guy who stabbed the Joker in the hallway, as he is dying on the floor, we see him in the background, giggling and laughing into himself, on the ground, like just watching Arthur die. It is insinuated by the fact that in the background, you can see this guy carving the sides of his cheeks to make a smile. It is insinuated that that is Heath Ledger's Joker. I don't know what to say. Like I made a joke to my friend earlier in the movie when Harley Quinn came in to see the Joker and she tells him that she's pregnant. And I turned to my friend and I was like, wouldn't it be funny if the baby was actually the Joker? actually went on to be the actual Joker. I said that completely ironically. I didn't think they would actually stoop that fucking low. It's just bad. I don't know, I'm, I'm all like flabbergasted now. Look, my hair's all over the place. Like, it I looks like I'm after being in a fight scene or some shit, man. But yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. 
it's bad. It's it's bad, bad. It's bad, bad, bad. But yeah, let me know down below what you guys thought of this movie. If any of you even say anything remotely nice about this movie or it's not as bad as everyone's saying, you're wrong. Just get mental help, please. <laughs> like, you're just wrong. But yeah, folks, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Comment down below if you thought of the video. Comment down below if you want to see in the next video. I'm going to go suffocate to death now because even standing is actually very taxing right now i don't know what's wrong with me but if you're new here make sure to subscribe we're on the road to 1k by the end of the year and if we do that i'm gonna be going skydiving and i'm gonna bring you all along for the ride fun but yeah folks i'm gonna go to seas now and yeah it's been exo i'll talk to us all later have a good one fuck me